Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today will be part one of three, and we're going to build out this fully responsive site. And you've got this header area, you've got this, uh, this nav bar up top here. You can either scroll down or click on this, and it'll jump you down here. And you've got a bunch of posts here now listed. And as you can see, whenever you put your cursor over any of these, there's this cool little animation that happens. You've got a link here to the actual post. You've got tags here that you can also click to and link to. Obviously, right now they don't go anywhere, but uh, we're building out this full home page. And then really uh, where the cool thing happens here is you can type in like breakfast, and you'll see that we've got just the ones that mention breakfast or have that tag here. Or you can type like blueberry all right, or whatever. And you'll notice that here this says blueberry waffles up here. Even though this is part of the description, it's going to pull that in. This one has blueberry as well, and this one has blueberry, even though none of these should. Um, I guess these two should, but this one shouldn't. Um, just to show you that it's searching not only the tags and the title, but also this uh, description area up here. So this is part one of three. Today, we're only going to work on the HTML. Next time, we'll work on the CSS. And then finally, we will work on the JavaScript. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, as promised, we have exactly nothing going on. Now, I need to show you a few things here. I've gone ahead and just linked up our fonts, the style sheet, and uh, the JavaScript down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Parcel to actually build this out. I've got a video on Parcel, but suffice it to say, I'm just going to do npm init-y, and that will answer yes to all of those things. Then I'm going to come into this package.json, and I've already got Parcel on my globally on my machine. So I'm just going to type Parcel and then index.html, which is the location of my file. I've also got these images here, you'll notice, uh, that are just waiting for us. Uh, but when I go ahead, now that I've got that set up, all I have to do now is write an npm run dev, which is that script we just wrote. And now I'll actually get a, a local host here that I can add. And now this is my actual page. If I come in here, you'll see if I add like an h1 tag that says hi, then you'll see it pops up on the page. Because parcel hot reloads, as I'm saving, it'll just pop over there on the right. All right, let's hide that sidebar. Let's jump in here a little bit, and let's go ahead and start on the HTML. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is create that nav area. So we'll say nav, or we're going to call this main nav, and that'll be the class we give it. And inside here, we're going to have a UL that has a class of nav list. And inside here, we're going to have uh, allies with nav item, and we'll have three of those. And then inside of each of those, we will have an a tag with the class of nav link. All right, you'll see those just pop out. Here we'll say home. This will be recipes. And lastly, blog. Okay, so that HTML is ready. Let's save it. And you'll see it populates over there. Nothing's going to look good today. Um, you're just going to have to deal with that emotionally because we'll come back and work on the SAS later. So uh, we've got that nav set up. Let's go ahead and work on the header now. We're going to give it a class of hero. The header is this area right here, this whole section. So the way I'm going to set this up here, let me go ahead and give us a little more space. Uh, the way I'm going to set this up here is inside here, we are going to have... Um, two things, we're going to have an area that we're just going to call hero description. Just That'll just be a div, and we'll have an h1 in here that says a chef du jour. And below we'll have a p tag, and that p tag will just say today I'm a chef. All right, below here we're going to have an icon, and this will be a link tag. And we're going to give it a class of hero arrow. Eventually, we're going to point this to an ID of blog post header. Now, we can simply add this as an image tag. And I'll show you where I've gotten this. Like in most of my videos where I use icons, I just use something from feather icons. And uh, we're going to use a down arrow. And you'll notice here I've got a bunch of options, but I used the chevron down. In fact, if I come over here, in my images folder, I've just got it sitting right here. And I'm going to actually copy the text or the actual code here and insert that into the middle here. Now, by doing it this way, 
Uh, we have this current color for our stroke, which means we can actually change the color of the SVG pretty easily just by changing the color of this A-Link. So as that changes, the stroke color will change to match, and uh, I find that's usually pretty easy to work with. Let's jump over back to this sorted list here, and now we've got our header done. All right, because the A-Link by default has this blue color, that's what my SVG now has until we change that. Okay, the next area we need to worry about here is down this section, we're gonna have this header, then an input field, and then all these blog posts. So let's come down here, we're just gonna have an H2 with an ID, a blog post header. And again, that's the one we just linked to up above here. And we'll call this recent blog posts. We're gonna have an input field down here with an ID of blog search. And we want to add to this a placeholder. And the placeholder will say, search for a post. And as we save, you'll see it populates over this way. Now, the only thing we've got left are these cards. And we're going to do that just below here. And that's the last thing we'll do for um, this video, this first section. We're going to wrap all of this in a section tag with the class of blog posts. And inside here, we're going to have a div called card container. And inside here, we're going to have a bunch of articles. So we'll say article with a class of card. Now, as we jump over back this way, you'll notice we've got a few things going on here. We've got this background image. We've got this description area. We've got a title and we've got these tags. Let me pull this up a bit. And in this card, we're first of all going to have a paragraph tag of card description. And I'll do something like lorem 31. I don't know, that's probably way too much. There we go, something like that. Next, we've got that image tag here and we'll give it a class of card image. And the source will be in our images folder. And we're just gonna grab image one. Oh, not 10, one. Now, as we save here, you'll notice that it is hot dogs, I think. So I'll come in here and add that hot dog meal. All right, lastly, we'll do loading equals lazy. And that'll save a little bit of bandwidth when somebody comes to this page. And we're gonna use that image and make it position absolute and have it basically cover that whole card area. But this whole section will actually also live in its own little section down here. And we'll call that card meta, all right, the card metadata that essentially will have two areas. It'll have a card meta title that's gonna to point to nowhere for now. And it'll say gourmet hot dog plate. I mean, is that a thing? Of course it is. All right, next we're gonna have the tag list. Again, this will just be a div with meta tag list. And we can add as many of these as we need, but we're gonna add links for each of these called card meta tag list item. And again, we're gonna have it point to nowhere. This one will say pork. These are pork dogs, I guess. And this one will say finger food. All right, so let's jump over here and see what we've got. We've got the description up top, we've got the image, and we've got our tags down this way. First, I guess we've got the title and then the tags. Now you might be wondering why I've got these labeled oddly like this, you know, where they're all kind of stacking on top of each other. But as we get into writing our SAS, I think you'll see the benefit of doing it that way. It's pretty easy to nest things that will only ever be connected to each other like this. All right, now I'm not gonna make you watch me fill out each of these over and over again, because I think uh, you'll get bored with that. But essentially this will be the structure the whole way down. We're just gonna add a bunch of articles exactly like this and just switch out the image, the alt tag, and uh, the title and uh, tags. All right, so let's wrap this video up. Thanks so much for watching. Next video, we will look at the SAS. Until then, happy coding.